Hi guys! Are you in the market for an IP camera but feeling overwhelmed by the technical jargon in the specification? Now today in this video, I'm going to guide you through the process of reading IP camera specification step by step. So get ready to dive into the world of IP camera specification and become a savvy shopper. And by liking and sharing this video, you are not only just supporting our channel Fast Cabling, you are also helping to spread useful information to a wider audience. So IP camera specification can provide valuable information about the camera's capabilities, features, and performance. By reading and understanding those specifications, you gain insight that go beyond the camera's appearance and price tag also help you to make informed decisions and ensure the camera that you choose aligns with your specific requirement and integrate seamlessly into your existing infrastructure and deliver the desired image quality and functionality that you need. So IP camera also known as network camera. It utilizes the power of internet protocol to transmit and receive data over computer network. So unlike the traditional analog camera, IP camera can convert video signal into digital format, which can provide higher image resolution and deliver clear and more detailed footage. Additionally, it supports advanced features like the remote access, video analytics, and integrating with other security systems. And due to those benefits, IP cameras has gained immense popularity in civilian systems. So now we are going to talk about the key specifications of the IP cameras. And feel free to go to any of the timestamps or right over here to jump to a specific target. But I do recommend you to stay for the whole thing. First is the resolution. Now it is a crucial specification to consider when reading an IP specs. It refers to the level of detail and clarity that an IP camera can capture in its video footage and it is typically measured in pixels and displayed as width by height value, such as 1920 times 1080 which is the full HD standard, or the 3140 times 2160 refers to 4K resolution. So for general monitoring application, a resolution of 1080p is often sufficient. And for scenarios that require more precise detail, such as facial recognition, a higher resolution might be necessary. So now I'm going to get on a website so we can look at an IP camera specification at the same time as we explain it. Let's go under civilian PTZ camera. Let's pick this one. So as you can see in the title, this is a 5 MB PTZ camera, which stands for 5 megapixels. And let's scroll it down. Under resource, we have the product specification. Let's click it and open it. Now you can see this is a 1080p standard camera, but actually it can support up to 2592 times 1944, which stands for the Super HD standard. So now we are going to talk about the frame rates. Now frame rates refers to the number of individual frame or images that the camera can capture per second and display as video and it's typically measured in a frame per second FPS and it can directly affect the civilians and fluidity of the video footage and it is important to consider that higher frame rates actually require more network bandwidth and capacity so for most general monitoring purpose a frame rate of 20 to 30 FPS is considered sufficient so now let's check out our frame rate so this is our frame rate you can see it has 20 up to 25 actually depends on the resolution so next we are going to talk about compression format 
Now it refers to the method that used to reduce the size of video files without significant loss of image quality. Now it employs algorithms that eliminate redundant or non-essential information from the video footage, now actually resulting in smaller file sizes. And common compression format that used in IP cameras including H.264 and H.265. H.264 offer good compression rates and 265 is a more advanced format and it can reduce fire sizes by up to 50% while maintaining similar video quality. So now let's check out our compression rate so here we are we support both h.265 and 264 and actually choosing which one depends on your situation so now i'm going to talk about lenses focal length and angle view now there are different type of lens used in the camera we have the fixed lens that means it cannot be adjust very focal lens that allow for manual adjustment and motorized lens that offer remote control and it's typically through the camera's interface or software. Now the focal length is measured in millimeters and it can determine the angle of view and the level of zoom. Now a smaller vocal length such as 2.8 millimeter can provide a wide angle view and capturing a border scene while a large focal length such as 12 mm can offer a narrow view of view but actually provide more magnification allowing for capturing objects in greater details from a distance so now let's check out our lenses we have it here this is a 30 times optical zoom in lens since this is a pdz camera and also the lenses is from 4.7 millimeters to 141 millimeters. That means our PDZ camera can capture a very precise detail in object from a far distance. Next is the low light performance. It is a camera's ability to capture clear and detailed images in environment with limited lighting condition. Low light performance is often measured by the camera's sensitivity to light, which is indicated by this lux rating. Now it represents the minimum amount of lights required for the camera to capture usable images. So a lower lux rating can indicate better low light performance, as the camera can capture clear images even in low light condition. And camera with wide dynamic range, the WDR technology, can capture details in high contrast scenes, ensuring both bright and dark areas are properly exposed. And also another technology called infrared illumination, the IR, it allowing the camera to capture images in completely darkness. Utilize infrared LEDs to emit invisible infrared lights that can is reflected back in the camera sensor so you can see in the dark so under our specification we have the sensitivity over here we do offer the ir when it's off we have the 2.60.001 lux and when it's on we have zero lux that means you can see it completely in the darkness Last but not least is the power requirement and the connectivity options. Now, power requirement is important specs to consider while planning the installation. And you have to ensure your camera can be powered sufficiently. Typically, we have the PoE or using external power supply. So you have to ensure your camera its power requirement are compatible with your existing power infrastructure. And for connectivity options, most common option is the Ethernet, which is the RJ45 port. And some of the camera offer wireless connection, that means it can connect without the need for an Ethernet cable. But actually, we prefer the PoE because it can eliminate the need for a separate power source and at the same time, it can provide a stable connection. So let's check out our power requirement. Scroll it down, we see the electrical. And this is the input voltage. We can choose from PoE plus or a DC 12 volt. 
This is the 25 watt power consumption and this is something we also need to consider about while choosing a camera. And over this side, under Ethernet, we can see we have the RJ45 port available for Ethernet connection. So when we scroll down, we still see a lot of different specifications. Under environmental, our PTZ camera is IP66 waterproof rated. When you put your camera outdoor, this is something you need to keep in mind. And the working temperature ranges from minus 35 degrees up to 55 degrees. So this is perfectly used outdoor. Also, there are many other specifications. And if you have any questions about your camera setup, please feel free to contact us through the link down in the description box below. And our team of experts will answer your questions as soon as possible. So now let's move on to the demonstration board and I'll do a very simple camera connection. So for a typical camera setup, we'll need a monitor to display the video footage. Now this is the router to provide the main network data. This is the NVR network video recorder to record your video footage. First, I'm going to use a short patch cord to connect our router to the NVR. And the NVR is already connected to the monitor using the HDMI cable. And I'm going to use another Ethernet cable to connect our router to our WebSmart PoE switch. I'm using the PoE switch to connect with the PDZ camera. So I'm going to plug in an Ethernet cable here to connect to the PDZ camera at the edge. So let's plug it in here. As you can see, I'm using the PoE technology, so only a single Ethernet cable can transmit both power and data, and eliminating the need for separate power unit. So the video should come up shortly. Let's give it a little bit of time. Here we go. I'm going to wave my hand to show you this is a live video. And thank you very much for watching us. And please like and subscribe our channel, Fast Cabling. You can also share our video to your friends or family who might benefit from it. 